Warrior's Corner, our next presentation, Army Medicine in Multi-Domain Operations with presenters Major General Michael Talley, Brigadier General Tony McQueen, Colonel Roger Giroux, Colonel Gina Adam, and Colonel James Jones. The Army Medical Research and Development Command is committed to providing solutions that address the military's unique medical readiness requirements. At MRDC, our medical research laboratories and subordinate commands execute science, technology, and acquisition programs that investigate medical solutions for the battlefield. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how the Army Health System will use experimentation, capability development, and other modernization efforts to guide science and technology in support of the future force. During the video, you will observe technology that the future Army Health System, along with its unified action partners, may use to support the health of operational forces during competition, the preservation of our fighting strength in conflict, and the reset of our forces in a return to competition. This type of technology will modernize our future medical formations to support dispersed Army forces conducting semi-independent operations along extended lines of communications in contested and austere environments. The central idea is that the Army Health System, as a component of globally integrated health services, will support the Army and the joint force conducting multi-domain operations with expeditionary and interoperable medical capabilities during competition. The future battlefield has the potential to isolate the Army Health System without the ability to evacuate casualties or get resupply. We will use technology to maximize the golden window of opportunity for evacuation, provide prolonged field care, and ensure medical resupply. The ultimate goal is to use technologies and procedures to extend the golden window. That's that vital time following injury to ensure survivability. In the future, large-scale combat operations will focus on the multi-domain battle space, which will include widely distributed semi-autonomous operations in various environmental conditions. These operations typically entail high-tempo, high-resource consumption and high casualty rates. I'm gonna start the call. This makes medical support for this fight immensely challenging. So we need to find the landmarks. So what we need to do is go. The Army Health System is preparing to meet this challenge by delivering a well-trained human technology team operating within an integrated intelligent joint medical environment. A medical intelligence system enables data visualization at every echelon. And initiate project principle. Yes, sir. Enabling commanders to see and understand the health status of their formations, while also enabling synchronization of resources. Army medics have the necessary information to perform the right treatment at the right time to deliver life-saving medical treatment as far forward as possible. Telementoring expands medical capability, pairing medical experts with far forward providers such as the combat medic at the point of need. A medical intelligence system has background features that reduce cognitive burden and workload through technology. In future large-scale combat operations, there may be thousands of casualties per day, creating the need for increased medical capacity and capability closer to the edge. Medical evacuation is opportunity-driven, dependent on mission requirements. In addition, casualty evacuation, use of non-medical transport platforms, will be deployed to support combat operations through three options, dedicated casualty evacuation, designated casualty evacuation, and platform of opportunity. All of the technology must integrate via artificial intelligence operationally and demonstrate efficacy for reduced disease and non-battle injury, improved clinical outcomes, and higher return to duty rates. Technology must inform the entire Army health system, enable the commander, ensure joint interoperability, and conserve the fighting strength that is why our information requirements are critical. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Colonel James Jones.
Jones. I'm your capability developer and the director of medical CDID. We're excited to be here this afternoon. Appreciate the Surgeon General and all of our uh, medical leadership that's here and all our partners in industry. Before I start in our presentation, I'd like to invite our commander of the Medical Center of Excellence, Major General Kelly, to do opening remarks, and then we'll start into the presentation. With that, sir. Okay, hey, thank you everyone for coming and attending today, and I think you saw from the video, and you heard from our Secretary of the Army and our other leaders, uh, just what large-scale combat operations and multi-domain operations are gonna be like in the future. We've enjoyed uh, the last uh, 20 years plus of combat operations, uh, knowing that whenever someone was injured, whenever we had a casualty occur on the battlefield, usually within a golden hour, they were transported back uh, to definitive care, and we've had our, our most successful uh, casualty rates or sustainment rates in the history of combat, uh, the lowest fatality rates ever. But when you look at uh, what we're going to endure in the future operating environment, we can't think for one moment that it'll be uh, the, same type of, uh, the same type of results or the same type of uh, golden window that we've always uh, enjoyed. Much longer periods uh, where we'll have to uh, sustain life, where we'll have to conduct perhaps prolonged, prolonged care for much longer periods of time. So at the Center of Excellence, it's my job, our charter at the Center of Excellence, to make sure that all of the facets of dot mil PF are synchronized and integrated so that as we build uh, life-saving technologies, as we look at the future operating environment, and we look at those, uh, those tenets that are under the multi-domain operation with uh, depth, with agility, the convergence that has to happen, and certainly the endurance, our charter uh, going forward, when you're looking at doctrine, is to absolutely be able to clear the battlefield, return to duty, and do all that in an environment where we have contested logistics. So at our center of excellence, being able to fuse all of that, making sure that uh, all of our training, our doctrine, everything that goes along with it is synchronized and ready for 2030, that's been our charter. So uh, honored to be here today as part of uh, uh, this distinguished panel and uh, looking forward to answering your questions as we talk about uh, what battlefield medicine, what the Army health system is going to need to do in the future operating environment. Thank you for your attendance, and I look forward to your questions. I'll be followed by General McQueen. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Brigadier General Tony McQueen, and as you saw in the video, I kind of said what uh, my purpose is and the organization I belong to, but I'm, I get the good fortune of commanding the Medical Research and Development Command. Uh, and our purpose is really to enable uh, the Army and really DOD as a whole to ensure that we are keeping all of uh, Army medicine and DOD medical capabilities modernized uh, to where they need to be at into the future. Uh, and we do that looking at uh, everything from infectious diseases and how do we provide force protection for that to combat casualty care and, and human performance of our service members. And so I, again, I look forward as well uh, taking some of your questions today and uh, hope you enjoy the, uh, the presentation before that. Thank you. Hey, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Colonel Roger Giroux. I'm the Deputy Chief of Staff for Operations at Headquarters DA Office of the Surgeon General, also the MedCom G357. And so from, from the Surgeon General's perspective and his staff, we're the integrators, the coordinators, and the synchronizers to help, to help keep the team of teams, right? And it really takes a team, team of teams to modernize the Army Medical Force to ensure that we get after our boss's intent in providing ready medical forces and ready medical individuals to answer the nation's call when they are called. So I look forward uh, to this session and taking any, any of your questions. Hey, good afternoon. I'm Colonel Gina Adam. So I uh, have a background in science and technology and product development. Uh, most recently as the commander of the Army's medical, moder uh, excuse me, medical material development activity, getting my two jobs confused, uh, where we uh, developed, modernized, procured, and fielded uh, medical equipment for the force. I'm now the chief of medical modernization and integration at Army Futures Command and uh, proud to be here on the panel. The work we're doing there is uh, my work in partnership with the Office of the Surgeon General and the Medical Enterprise uh, for the Army uh, and Defense 
uh, and getting modernized solutions and synchronizing requirements. And the other piece of that is working with our liaison officers at the cross-functional teams to ensure that medical equities are represented. So pleased to be here today. Thank you. Okay, team. We're going to get started with a short presentation. Next slide, please. What we want to do is talk to you about how we're integrated into uh, the joint space and how Army medicine is all about people first by integrating healthcare. One of the things as we modernize, we've taken the strategy documents from the national level all the way down to our Army medical modernization strategy that define how we are going to independently and jointly bring together Army medicine to, to cover the three things that General Talley discussed early, earlier. How do we how do we overcome contested logistics? And how do we uh, in, make sure that our team is ready for prolonged field care? Next slide. What we want to do is talk to you a little bit about our concept. So the concept of operations for 2028 is the first document that was approved by the Army's Futures Command that highlights how we are going to mitigate gaps across the joint space. So it's important to understand that these documents build on the idea, and that's the concept, and that we're going to work across the spectrum of the dot mill PFP to integrate that to the force. What it does is it provides us four key areas that we need to uh, focus on. One of them is medical C2. How do we communicate effectively from the point of need all the way to the theater medical command? We also have the need to make sure that anything we do enables the operating force. The key desire is to make sure that all of our uh, technology and our implementations influence the three things that win wars and take care of people, which is our number one priority. And when we look at how we're going to do that, we know that we're going to need autonomous resupply. We're going to need autonomous systems to help drive it in the future that are AI-enabled, artificial intelligence, and it's going to help us optimize evacuation and maximize return to duty rates. We know that that is the future. So the concept helps mitigate those uh, gaps that we've identified through multiple studies and allows us to inform them. Next slide. What we want to talk about is the concept. As you look at this visual concept, you'll notice that it's joint in nature. It is integrated by the process by which we believe we will take technology and inform the Army Health System of the future to integrate jointly across the system to make sure that we're able to accomplish our three goals and make sure we take care of our people. That's the idea behind the concept. The experimentation that we're going to do next will allow us to define what those requirements will be that will help ensure that the Army Health System is capable of meeting those requirements of our soldiers, sailors, and our other partners that are going to be out on the joint allied uh, force. We understand that we know that our partners are going to be key to our success. The evacuation piece is going to be critical in the future, so we're going to focus on medevac autonomously and CASAVAC. Next slide. We want to make sure that we integrate the medical common operating picture to give us a single site picture of our health system, where we know where the patient is from the point of need all the way back to maximize and return to duty. The goal is to ensure we have full capability to, uh, to maximize care along the continuum. Next slide. It also emphasizes the need that we have to focus on chemical and biological and nuclear uh, effects in the future and be able to treat and be able to prevent those type of uh, crisis issues in the future to make sure that we can take care of our team. Next slide. And it, it ultimately ends with the soldier at the point of need, our combat medics, which are the most trained in the world to provide that world-class care, the prolonged care that's going to be needed in the future. This conceptual idea is being implemented now with our strategy to make sure we're ready for the Army of 2030 and beyond. Next slide. Our framework for the modernization strategy is focused on people, money, and time in ways and means. It allows us to focus on the far right through medical governance, and we need to make sure it's prioritized to ensure that we have operational feedback to ensure that any solution that we develop is approved by our maneuver commanders and is enforced by our medical leadership across the joint space. 
We are going to do that by making sure we know how our maneuver commanders are going to fight and how we are going to deliver that soft power that's going to ensure uh, to ma maximize return to duty rates. And we're going to enforce that we're going to be online for Army of 2030 because our Surgeon General has commented several times we will not be left behind. Next slide. We're going to do that through research and technology that enables us in five key areas that as we look down this list over the next few years. Our prioritization with our material developer from General McQueen and others and our industry partners are going to help us achieve the goals to make sure that we're AI enabled, that we're utilizing the technology that will enforce data driven uh, decision making on the battle space to improve clinical outcomes. We're going to focus on quantum technology and additive manufacturing for the future because that's going to be key. Next slide. I want to focus a little bit on experimentation. You heard General Jones yesterday describe how PC-22 is going to be enacted. Army Medical will be out there in full esteem. We're going to have joint solutions from the point of need all the way back to the Theater Medical Command. We're going to evolve that with our prolonged care augmentation detachment and show how these technologies and our people can then implement the modernization strategy and the concept. That's the key to our future. As you look, we're going to be utilizing multiple experiments over the next few years to get after the priorities for the Army. The Army Health System is endorsing experimentation like never before. We're on a glide path to ensure experimentation feeds what our requirements will be. It's going to ensure that the proponent picks the right solutions for the requirement to make sure that as it goes to the material developers that we've identified what we can afford and what is important. Next slide. This is a conceptual slide of the visual that you saw and the importance of it cannot be understated because it's centered around the people first. Think about it in the future. We have to have technology that drives the ability for the non-medical provider and the medical provider to provide better care at the point of need. That's the key. That's what's made us successful over the years, and that will not change. Whether we're in prolonged field care situations or quick evacuation, it will not matter. There's three triangles that we must enforce, and they've got to be seamlessly connected. Prolonged field care must be connected to evacuation, right? And it must be connected to treatment. Those three adages will never change. If you change the, any of those and do not have them connected, the clinical outcomes are not good. So the Army Health Enterprise is focused on ensuring that we can connect those three dots and make sure that we have seamless care across the entire spectrum. You'll notice that we're going to be leveraging telemedicine, leveraging technology at the point of need for our medics and non-medics, and using autonomous aircraft uh, and future long-range assault aircraft that we're going to give, fly further and allow us to take care of distance in Indo-PACOM and other regions around the world. It allows us to be positioned so we can make sure that we can execute the concept. Next slide. The gaps that we're focused on are closing, are, are based on physical things that we see across the spectrum and they're identified in the concept and in the strategy. You'll notice that distances, mass casualty as the video pointed out, and more importantly, our air and ground evacuation must be very strong. It's got to be autonomous, and we've got to ensure that that prolonged care is uh, substantive so we can make sure that we get to evacuation and treatment uh, and ensure that that circle is met. We understand the future uh, futuristic weapons are going to be a problem, and we're going to be there to make sure our soldiers, uh, sailors, and airmen and Marines are taken care of jointly, along with our allied partners. We are looking at making sure that we uh, uh, cover the future challenges as well in those gaps, which influence the entire process. The key is, is experimentation allows us to further define those gaps and highlight where the requirements are at. Next slide. And I know many of you are here to see what we're focused on on requirements. Requirements are driven based on threat-based assessment. We look at what can we do to maximize uh, return to duty rates, make sure we're clearing the battlefield, and obviously uh, we, uh, our number one priority is to overcome contested logistics, because without that, we can't sustain the fight and can't take care of our, uh, our soldiers downrange. When we look at that, we've got to have a common operating picture. 
that we're focused on with the joint space to develop so everybody sees the same site picture from the number of casualties, the number of beds, and the number of providers. We're also looking across AI to help drive decision making and triage. Artificial intelligence is going to be key and having a cloud-based technology to do that. Our, our material developers and our research department is very focused on making sure that we are able to detect and diagnose novel diseases. And they're doing incredible work at MRDC uh, getting ahead of this along with our industry partners. We are also seeing the development of things like synthetic blood and other key products that are going to help us in the future overcome those contested logistics and maximize our logistics space, reducing Cuban weight and allowing us more maneuver. We ultimately have to make sure that we're able to hold a patient longer, but we want to make sure there is evacuation fed into it with proper treatment. All of those things are centered around what we do. And Obviously, the big key thing is providing remote technology that it helps providers downrange and non-medical providers understand that they have reach back from mental health and other technologies that will influence treatment calls that are made at the point of need. That's the key, our key strategy. And ultimately, the main thing is, is we've got to have technologies on these platforms that in, uh, in improve patient care, but don't overload the medics at the point of need and allow that transfer of data that is seamless to our joint space so we can make good decisions. And that's how we're going to tackle that from a requirements, uh, requirements perspective. Last slide. We're ultimately doing this at the Capability Development Integration Directorate with our partners. We have the Future Fielded Integration Directorate, which deals with the here and now. And then we have our Army capability managers that represent all of our war fighting functions and the 10 medical functions. And then us, where we're looking at the future of 2030, 2040 to build requirements. We do that both material and non-material. The key is to use the entire dot mill PFP process to highlight that strategy. Last slide. Okay. This is the uh, great slide because it highlights all the great work that's been done this year. We've had the concept approved the Army Medical Modernization Strategy approved by AFC and our Surgeon General. It highlights how our 10 medical functions are going to do the three key things, and I hope all of you remember this. We're going to maximize return to duty rates, we're going to clear the battlefield, and we're going to overcome contested logistics because we're Army. We, we are in the uh, space to make sure our patients are taken care of, and we are all about people first. So that's how we're going to tackle this as we go forward. With that, we're open to your questions. Hi, good afternoon. That was an outstanding briefing. And with uh, relatives in the military, it makes me feel very, very confident in the future of our medical care for those individuals. My question is, as we see the proliferation of use of satellite communications, and you did mention telemedicine, do you see that extending down to the forward edge of the tactical area on the battlefield using satellite communications? Absolutely, sir. That and other technologies, not just relying on satellite, but other redundant communication systems to provide that, uh, uh, that answer far forward for our 68 Whiskey combat medics and others. Great question. We're absolutely going to enforce that. Does any of my other colleagues have anything they want to add to that? That's a great question, sir. And when you look at uh, just the, the dispersion of our formations in the future operating environment, we can't get a surgeon you know, to every place where there's a point of injury. You can't get them in the foxhole. So absolutely, the training that we're going to give our, our first response uh, operators on the battlefield are 68 whiskeys. We're looking at a, a higher level of training so that they understand the physiology uh, for applying uh, certain techniques uh, far forward. So when you're looking at uh, the potential, using technologies, just imagine if you will, uh, using man-to-machine interface where you actually have a surgeon, perhaps at Walter Reed, uh, talking through a medic that is using a set of IVAS goggles uh, to, uh, to, to actually uh, perform a laparotomy, uh, you know, far forward. That's the type of technology, that's the type of futuristic uh, types of things that we're working on right now. 
uh, to get far forward. So uh, the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, it has to be secure. And uh, those are some of the things that we're working on across the, the full range of .NET PF. Sir, thank you very much. I appreciate that answer. Hello, my name is Josh Agenson. I'm a Marine Loggy by background, so I truly appreciate what the med community does. Um, I've been working the last few years in the Marine Corps on the CBM Plus concept and with TACOM as well. And if you apply biometric sensors to the individual, they essentially become a piece of equipment to some degree. So what is the integration of data management on instantaneous condition reporting, possibly looking at life progression or health as a way to synchronize with autonomous logistics to forecast material using AI machine learning back into the DLA systems, which I would call just-in-time resupply through AI and autonomy. Sir, that's a great question and you're hired. Uh, we want you on the team. <laughs> I'd love to yeah, continue yeah, the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, there's no short answer to that, but all of that is tied into what we are doing. Uh, absolutely, you're describing the exact, uh, you know, you're, you basically just described the concept better than I did in the 20 minutes. So it really ties in the sensor, the artificial intelligence, and the triage to get after those various points. Because you're right, you can't do predictive logistics if you don't know what you're treating. Uh, and so absolutely it's going to be key to our development. There's a lot of great stuff that General McQueen has got out in PC that he can highlight that we can talk about. Yeah, no thanks. I appreciate the question. Uh, quite honestly, I, I wish we were as far along as uh, and advanced as what you just uh, described there. But, but, uh, but no, we, you know, I'll give you a few examples. I mean, we're looking from a logistics standpoint, we are looking at a, a capability that um, you know, as you as a medic is is providing care, or even if you're at a role three capability, you know it's automatically detecting what is it, what is the product, what is the material that's been used to conduct that treatment. It's already going back into an ordering type process to re replenish that uh, that piece of material. But at the same time, it's giving feedback uh, that will give us more indicators of the type of injuries and wounds that the the soldier experienced. On the other hand. We're also taking a look at, I'll give you an example, we just had a recent conference uh, where we had a canine, and the canine had a collar on, and, and it does great things and detects you know, heat and, and other indicators to the canine, and it, we were sitting here saying, well, wouldn't it be great if we just had that in the canine, and, and the handlers were like, it already is in the canine. I would foresee someday we'll have the same type of thing on, on a, a service member, uh, some type of sensor, some type of detection where we can immediately get all the data we need off that soldier and it's already feeding into that electronic health record. Now the key part certainly is the IT, the protecting it, and uh, how we're gonna do that, and that certainly is the challenge moving forward, but it's, it's a good challenge to have going forward. Other questions? I know you have questions. We're the Army Health System. We're here, yes sir. Colonel Jones, that was a great briefing. If you look at Ukraine as the first new battle of the modern MDO era, you know, it's an artillery intensive battle. Russia is sending 70,000 rounds a day, Ukraine sending about 40,000. So artillery sensitive, how are we going to clear the battlefield in that kind of environment? Yeah, great, great question, sir. Uh, so part of our strategy is to look at autonomous vehicles, we're looking at all kinds of evacuation platforms that we don't have today that we will in the future uh, to make sure that we can do the very thing that you're describing because it re requires us to maximize ground evacuation and CASAVAC, uh, different than we've done in the past. Some of it, like in Project Convergence, you'll have autonomous vehicles. Those are examples of ways that we can still move and maneuver at the battle uh, front without aircraft. And when we can have aircraft, we're going to move in and obviously evacuate like we always have. So the key is, is to balance ground and air evacuation, knowing why that that may generate prolonged field care, to your point, that allows us to make sure we can treat far forward but evacuate as soon as possible and ensure the treatment to maximize return to duty rates and overcome those things that you're described with the contested logistics. Because that's a logistics problem, and that's why we're so focused on it in those spaces. So our, our uh, adventure at Project Convergence is going to answer a lot of that and help us inform the future. Great question. Does any of my other panelists want to add to that? Well, James, I, I think you hit it, and that's a, that's a great question. 
And at the Center of Excellence, uh, you may or may not know, but we have a Center for Army Lessons Learned. And uh, now that the Medical Center of Excellence falls under TRADOC, uh, we are well nested with the lessons learned that are coming out of theater. So as we look at uh, the need for prolonged field care, as we're looking for uh, just the times that it's taking to evacuate some of the Ukrainians, um, we're looking at that and certainly folding that into doctrine. The one thing we haven't seen that's uh, in Russian doctrine very clearly is the intermittent use of, uh, of chemical munitions. We haven't seen that and the fact that they're in a special mission or a special operation, uh, vice uh, fighting a NATO ally. We're well aware of that. So when we look at uh, just the use of patient decontamination, putting that back in our curriculums, we're very well aware of it. But uh, all the while, uh, we are learning, taking copious notes right now from what's going on in Ukraine. Thanks for the question. Other questions? Yes, sir. Hey there. I'm Tim Kreider. I'm, uh, my background is recently a uh, command command medical planner. So my question really is, how is Army CD looking at, or Med CD looking at uh, the joint aspect of this, right? You mentioned that the entire medical network is a joint medical network. So as you're looking at your capabilities or your requirements for capabilities, how are they integrated with sister services? A hey, great question, sir. Uh, effective 1 October, many of you may not realize our material developer has moved to the Defense Health Agency uh, and our requirements process is integrated into the Defense, uh, Defense Health Agency. This morning I held meetings with our joint partners on that very topic. We're going to be writing requirements jointly uh, to understand and explore gaps together, explore experimentation together, uh, and produce solutions together. So you're, you great up a great question, uh, and General McQueen can add to that because that is exactly the space that we're in. So let me turn that over to my boss, sir. Please. Yeah, no, James. I would just add that it's it's really nothing different than what we've been doing from at the Medical Research Development Command. While our title has been Army uh, Medical Research and Development Command, we've been developing for DoD as a whole, and so it's really flushing out and ensuring we've got a good governance. Uh, in process so that as we get the actual gaps and what the requirements are uh, across the Department of Defense, uh, those can be prioritized and then we can go forward with programs uh, to develop a capability against it. So it's, it's uh, again, nothing new to what we've been doing, but it's important that we get a good process in place on the prioritization. And quite frankly, many of the, the uh, material uh, products that we've developed in the past have been pushed out across the DOD uh, previously as well. Thanks, sir. Other questions from our team? Sir? Oh, go ahead, sir. We'll get you right up there. Yes, sir. How are you? Good, sir. I'm George Bowman. I'm with Priority Soldier. Uh, my question has to do with mental health aspects of transitioning soldiers. Um, has the research lab come up with any ways that we can reduce the rate of veteran suicide and the rate of veteran homelessness? That's a great question, sir. Uh, I'm going to turn that over to General McQueen, who could provide you a little additional uh, insight on that question, sir. No, sir, thanks for the question, and certainly it is a very uh, complex challenge and one that we need to devote a lot of energy and resources to, and we are. Um, and I wish I did have a good answer that would have a direct impact on today, but we do have a lot of resources. We have a lot of programs that are focused on it. I think they're making a difference, but we, we won't stop until we get the, the solution to, you know, makes it a, a zero uh, defect type of uh, solution out there. Um, certainly, we're doing a lot of work in the area of, uh, of sensors and trying to get a better read of different things that go on in the human body itself. Uh, we've had some, some good indicators in the past and, and good feedback in the past from, from programs that you know, look at different sleep patterns. And, and a leader can see that they've got a service member who uh, their sleep pattern has come off. And at least it gives a red flag that as a leader, I need to go check and figure out what's going on. There's something different in the pattern of how they're operating. So that, that's one way, um, but we certainly have a number of programs that are trying to get after uh, eliminating that, uh, that across the, the Department of Defense. Thank you, sir. Sir. 
A, I don't know who asked the question on behavioral health, but uh, uh, hi, sir. Uh, certainly from the Office of the Surgeon General perspective, spending a lot of time and effort on that in support of our soldiers, right? And certainly as they transition. So looking at how we increase capacity, a lot of effort going into the virtual health realm, right, to address the requirements of our people, uh, whether they're a soldier or a dependent. Uh, and then certainly as we with the Army, right, look at uh, the needs of different communities. Uh, if you uh, attended the family forum this morning, certainly discussed was Alaska and what, what efforts the Army and we, Army Medicine, have done to address issues there and working with now the 11th Airborne Division. So certainly keen on the mind of Army Medicine senior leadership and we're gonna keep getting after it until uh, we're down to, to no, no uh, suicides. Thank you, sir. Sir. Yes, uh, Milton Ang from the Army PEOC3T. Uh, what is the medical logistics command that was at Fort Detrick? Did they get realigned under, uh, you know, under the task force, just like the Defense Health Agency? I'll let General uh, McQueen realigned. answer that for you, sir. Thank you. So yes, the, uh, the medical logistics uh, capabilities that used to come under the Medical Research Development Command now fall under Army Material Command, but uh, I think more so you're talking specifically for at Fort Detrick. We now Army Material Command established the Army Medical Logistics Command, and they are sub, they are aligned with uh, CECOM, uh, which is also under AMC, but all still at Fort Detrick, just aligned differently. Other questions? I know you guys are excited about it. It's people first. Come on now. I mean, we got to get excited. We're about people. Any questions? Anything that we didn't answer? Either the presentation answered all the questions or you guys are all in. We're ready to hire you. Come on and join the Army Health System. We're ready. We're ready to take you, especially you, sir, for predictive logistics. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for all your time and uh, service. Uh, my name is Jim Rice. I'm with a company called Vantic. Uh, one of the things that I've seen in the last couple of years is integration and interoperability continue to be a long pole in the tent. And with the need for not only joint, but coalition and allied participation, uh, you know, where would industry go to help you make those systems interoperate and integrate better when they're not all U.S. assets? That's an excellent question. I'm going to invite Colonel Gina Adam to answer that question. She is the interoperability expert. Come on up, ma'am. Well, I don't know that I'm the interoperability expert, but thanks. Um, so, sir, to answer your question, I mean, I think this is a a tough question that we're really struggling with, right? And we have addressed that we, or that we know, acknowledge that we need to address it, right? So interoperability, not just within Army Medicine, but across the Joint Force and then to the NATO allies, right? And so there's certainly some things that I think we'll hope to see in PC-22 uh, as we're out there experimenting, as well as in our future experiments to look at how that, um, data flows across the battlefield and the development of a data architecture. So more to follow and, and certainly um, contact us at AFC if you have ideas. We have a portal. I, I can't rattle it off to you just yet, but we do have a portal for, for, for ideas. So thank you. And sir, our concept does lay out the strategy of the data flow uh, because it's all about the data for this particular piece. We'd love for you to look at it, provide feedback uh, or other ideas or solutions along with the strategy as well. Both documents lay it out in pretty, uh, pretty, de uh, pretty much detailed analysis that you guys could then weigh in on from an industry perspective of what we might be able to do differently. Thank you. Any last minute questions? We'll stand by uh, to answer any questions up here at the stage. I think there's a next uh, piece, but we'll be over here to the left if you guys have any questions for us. Really appreciate the time. Appreciate you focused on people first in the Army medical system. We're, we are uh, Army strong, as you know, and we're very excited about you being here at AUSA and supporting this event. Critical, because it's about our people. So at the end of the day, it's the most important thing you're gonna do today. So enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, sir.